about this is when I had a taste, I had my coworkers do a taste test between my pour over and a um, one from the machine that we had. And one of the coworkers was like, oh my God, that's such a great like pour over the, you know, the machines taste disgusting to me now. And I was like, thank you so much. And another one of my coworkers went, this is the only time I've ever enjoyed this coffee. And I went, thank you so much. That is my proudest moment. And I will always do a pour over if someone asks. Nice. Maybe not during peak. I'll be annoyed about it if it happens when, you know, I've got like 50 customers in a half hour and one of them's like, can you stop everything you're doing to make my drink? I'd be a little pissed about that. But I'd, I'd still do it. Well, yeah, it's your job. It is my job. Yeah, but people don't do their jobs all the time. <laughs> Congress. <laughs> And then kidnap Dalton to go have lunch with my family and I. Oh, also, I've learned uh, Grandpa lore. Ooh. Yeah, Kim the... Kelso. Mm -hmm. The dynamite grandpa. Yes. Did I tell you about his weed thing? Yes. Colin? Yeah. And how he wanted to go sell it to other cancer patients mm -hmm. nationwide. And my mom said, Kim, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Also the gun running. <laughs> that too. Yeah, the gun running. The lore. I did tell Dalton, though, to ask about your Uncle Randy lore. Ah, uh, Uncle Randy. The <laughs> pastor of the painful truth. <laughs> he is quite a man. <laughs> Do you think him and my grandfather would get along well? No. How, how conservative is he? My Uncle Randy? Yes. It, he's not that conservative at all. Because Good, mine isn't either. He just doesn't tolerate people that get on his nerves. And from everything that you've told me about your grandfather, uh, my, my Uncle Randy has been using the word yapper since I was one years old. Okay, yeah, he is a yapper, my grandfather. He's very kind, though, and great to be around. Yeah, but my like... Uncle Randy cusses out parents, so... Yeah. He doesn't care. I don't care. know that they'd get along. He will literally... I have been with him in a car as the McDonald's drive-thru employee was like, Sorry, can you pull up, sir? And he goes, no. <laughs> oh my god, they would not get along. Yeah, and they're like, please? And he's like, I paid for my food. I'm here. And they're like, please. <laughs> and it will be like 20 minutes. And he, he just looked at them and he's like, tell the rest to pull forward. Like, sir, this is how the establishment works. We're begging you. Well, because, but here's the thing, though. The woman then turned around and brought out the order. Like, as soon as he stopped talking, turned around, gave us a bag. And he turned to me and he's like, see? And he drove away. <laughs> he gave you someone else's food. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I guess. He's like, we paid for this food? Before them? We're getting it before them. I was like, okay, Uncle Randy. <laughs> like, all right, this seems a little unnecessary. Mm-hmm. feel like we were going to get it anyway. He's like, no, 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 no. This is what we had to do. He, uh... I mean... Being he... someone who's who's worked in, like, food stuff, it's like, at that point, when someone's like, no... You kind of do just have to get in, give in, because it's like, like, I can't do anything. Oh, I'm aware. Hostage. Especially since he was driving a big ass lifted Ram truck that was hogging basically both of the drive through window spots. Like he's taking up an entire fucking drive through. Hmm. At that point, um, he drives a really big truck. He has to actually be like, hmm, can I fit through this when it has, like, the clearance numbers? I'm like, dude. He's just a big truck guy. He is. He sells brakes. And gears. And valves. He's just that type of guy. He sells bits and bobs. And he's married to a vice principal. That's some... Mm. 
Yeah, that's some big married to a vice principal energy, I must say. <laughs> Literally, like, the, the problem is, um, my Aunt Melissa is a sweetheart, um, and the only person she's ever rude to is him. And, um, the only person he's ever nice to is her, and the rest of the world can go fuck itself. So they're the that's perfect really pair. That's really funny! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, sometimes <laughs> when my Aunt Melissa's like, damn, this is going to be like a bad assembly or meeting with like the PTO. He's just like, I'll come along. <laughs> Aww. No, it's not aw. It's when you can see like this 6'5 red-faced angry bun just yelling at you. Um, it's, it's just kind of like that, you know? Yeah. He's just kind of like that. You know? Yeah, he's... Certainly is. But, you know, that's Randy Lore. Randy Lore be like that. <laughs> but you know what lore we gotta dive into? Wonder Lore. <laughs> So, as we begin this season finale, Jamie, can you give the recap? Oh, oh Lord. Uh, I was in the middle of getting dinner. <laughs> okay. Um, Jesus. Let me pull up my notes and get back to my computer. Okay, so we started, I believe, with Ilan talking to Diana in the Dream Realm. Mm -hmm. And it took a little bit of convincing, but she did eventually believe that it was Ilan and not some horrible trick. They had a conversation. She was not happy, even a little bit. Um, she was, uh, also to get us all caught up, she was a very cool archer. Basically the spitting image of Aspasia, at least from the back it was described, and when she turned around it looked almost like a perfect blend of Elon and Aspasia. Which, super sweet. Anyway, um, she's around 17 or 18 now. They had a conversation in which she laid into a lawn for leaving and she was incredibly hurt very very unhappy with everything and Alon tried to explain why he did what he did but she was not really having it and so at the end she kind of rejected the concept of I don't want to say she entirely rejected Ilan as a person, but was essentially like, you need to get your shit together first. Mm -hmm. um, with the phrase that I believe the session was named after, uh, Physician Heal Thyself. Mm -hmm. um, after that, when we woke up, and she forcefully ejected Ilan from the dream after that. When we woke up, uh, Ilan did not come out of his tent for quite some time, didn't really eat anything, and we all assumed it was a very, very bad night for him. We sort of quietly, you know, got everything ready around him. Um, then when we were ready to set out, Ilan also packed up his tent and went with us. We had, I believe, a skill challenge, is that right? Mm-hmm to see how efficiently we were able to get there and whether we were going to skirt along the outside of the Tempest Wood or cut through. And we all unanimously decided to skirt outside. Unanimous. Um, <laughs> wasn't it? No. Did you want to go inside, Vicha? Not inside, but 
I wanted to go to the uni- well, not inside. Oh, that's right, first, because we had after getting void books. Yeah, because when Boudica and Vicha scouted ahead, they saw the university and they were like, "We go get void cloaks," and we were like, mm, "Best not," especially not with <laughs> um, Elon in the state he's in and Neza still recovering from surgery, and you know something weird going on with Vicha. But nobody, nobody knows. Nobody cares about what's going on with Vicha. So anyway, um, we then, after that, had the skill challenge to see how efficiently and quickly we were able to go to uh, get to Carthum Gores. And we ended up getting there very efficiently. We got really, really well. Um, the session ended a bit early when we ran into Diana... We, she hasn't seen us yet. We came across Cartham Gores, and on the outside of it is Diana. She, we see her, she does not see us yet. Correct. And that's where we ended. Very nice. Then this is where we begin. As I now must ask, what are you guys doing? I think Beecha just sort of looks toward Alon. And Asa does as well, I believe. Yeah, let's go. Gotcha. And Beecha would fall in line behind him. Then it's everyone fallen in line. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then, Alon, what does your approach look like? Uh, like a man desperately trying to hold it together. <laughs> Fair. Then, as you're approaching, Diana is reaching the gate with like this large cart. Um, it's like a pull cart, and she seems to have not seen you yet. She's, like, putting her hand on the gate, like, seemingly trying to open it up. How are you trying to get her attention? Uh. I guess I'll just give, like, a sharp cough. And... You can see, like, Diana jumps a bit and turns around and sees you. And there's just this moment of silence. Can you perform surgery right now? Uh, sure. Okay. And she grabs a hold of your arm, Alon. And she's going to try to start, like, pulling you into Cartham Gorse. I'll follow. Gotcha. And for, like, a moment as she's pulling you in, you can see, like, she stops. And she sees Boudica and Neza. And there's just this moment where both of you can see Diana recognize you two. And her gaze shoots right through both of your souls. I don't know who any of you are, but except you two. None of you come in. What about him? And I point to Kayle, who lives here. <laughs> you can see Kayle just kind of waves. She says, all right, him. We got to go, though. And she continues okay. trying to pull you. Yeah, yeah, go on. Uh, it's, it's Randall. Um, He, he was... Okay, Injured. condition. What's... Uh, he, he was stabbed. By what? How? Stabbed, uh, okay. Agnes, uh, ran him through. Uh, with what? Her claws. Claws, okay. Uh, how big? Uh, and she, like, makes... And I figure a... we're moving as yeah. we're talking. And she makes, like, a size with her hands. Um, you probably guess a foot, a foot and a half. 
Okay, it was definitely a stab, not a slash. Um, probably a little bit of both. All right, and I sort of bring a bring around my toolkit, start searching through it for stuff. I, I I've been trying to help. Um, I've been trying to clean the wound and, and things, but I, I think it's gone septic. All right. How long ago was this? Is the bleeding staunched? It's staunched. Yes. Uh, he was injured maybe a week or two ago. It's just gotten worse since then. Okay. Possible necrosis. All right. Uh, and yeah, at this point, I don't think she's dragging. I think I am speed walking with her. Okay. Then, as you're speed walking, you're brought through the crumbling building and fortress that is Kartham Gores. Kayla kind of right behind you, um, just being a pair of hands where you need them. And as you're led kind of into its guts, Diana bursts open what appears to be at one point like the mess hall. And you can see lying on a table looking in a very bad way, an older Randall Roquefort, Agnes's father. Uh, just quick look, where has he been hit? Um, as you walk up and you begin to pull back the, the shirt and everything else that's there, it appears like he has uh, a stab wound in like the upper pectoral if it's gone... On the side of his heart? Side of his heart. If okay. the necrosis is there, his odds aren't great. Is he conscious? You can see that he's kind of like fading in and out as he says, Diana, well, well, are you back? Uh, well, what happened? And you can see Diana like rushes over. Shh, shh, shh it's all, it's all right, Dad. It's all right. Um, I, uh, we, my dad, he's here. He, not you, but uh, there's a doctor uh, here gonna help. Diana, uh, does Gotham Gore still have a supply of clean water and uh, clear alcohol? Alcohol, yeah. Water, we we have one, um, a little ways nearby. A well that's still pretty intact. Okay, is it outside so the others can get to it? Yes. Rush back, tell them to get as much as they can carry. And you can see, like, Agnes looks down at Randall and Kaylee says, It's alright, I got it. Anything else you need, boss? Uh... I'm outside... No, just as much as clean water as you can get. All right. And Kayla is going to go bursting out of the kind of now makeshift actually, operating room. Mm. Actually, wait, Diana, mm. uh, are there still, um, I, I don't know, uh, full dressers cloth of any sort? Yeah, there is old uniforms and stuff. Clean as far as you know? Uh, maybe a little dusty, but not so dirty. All right, that should work. Tell Kaylee we to find him. I can go get him. Okay. And Diane is going to bolt off in a separate direction. Uh, do I see any lanterns, braziers, torches? Uh, lighting room, a few, yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to grab one that I think could be usable and start sterilizing tools. All right. Start sterilizing tools. As you're doing so... Uh, we will cut over now to Kayla as he is rushing out and looks at all of you. Uh, we need clean water fast. There's a well somewhere nearby. Alon needs as much of it as we can carry. Uh, did you have buckets? Um, here. And he kind of like goes back behind the wall for a few seconds and comes out with some rusted old buckets. Boudica will take... Um, like try to take two buckets in each hand. I'm I'm guessing these buckets have handles on them so that she can have two buckets in each hand. Yeah. Okay, that is what she'll do. All right. These will not do that many, but she'll carry what she can. Okay. 
Can I attempt to use Be wizard spellbook to make sure that these are clean inside? Uh, sure. Make they're kind of rusty. Make a mental check for sterilization. As you quickly start, like, <laughs> flipping through the spells, and you're like, all right, what can I use? What can I use? What can I use? Oh, I did that entirely wrong. I'm gonna have to count that by hand. I did the wrong one. Um, that is one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven successes. Eleven? Uh, I have benefit one, so it's four, five, okay. or six. Gotcha. And I accidentally did, uh, the wrong... What's the word? Shortcut. Gotcha, gotcha. Meta. Then, as you kind of, like, focus in, you're like, alright, I need something, anything, and you're like, okay, um, heat probably would be good, as you kind of, like, spark up the inside of the buckets. Uh, you're able to contain the heat so it doesn't singe who's ever holding them. But you think you've gone and sterilized them. You can take a hero point. That would have been a problem later. And Veach is also taking what he can carry, by the way. Okay. Thank you. Then, as this is happening, Kayla is kind of, like, waiting at the gate, kind of on bucket duty for whoever is bringing back the clean water. And he's just going to be faring as much back as possible. And Polydectes will be running back and forth, too, bringing water. And I'm... I'm... Boudica is just, like, full fairy mode, where she is carrying as many buckets as she can, filling them up, carrying them back as quickly as possible, probably flying to, like, make it quicker. Are you... going all out with your flying? Yes. Then what does it look like as you extend your wings, Boudica? Maybe at first there's like a concerning crack. As it kind of sounds like a snap of a bone, but then these white glowing, like with a bit of a tinge of gold to them, wings unfurl out of Boudica's back as she she's not being silly right now. She means business. And as you mean business, Vicha and Neza would both see, as the wings extend, Boudica's speed quadruples as she starts to move back and forth to the well, hauling up the water, going back and forth at lightning speed, a single flap of the wings sending this typhoon of wind propelling her forward. Everyone is serious now. At this point, we cut back to you, Alon, as you are looking over Randall. Diana is bringing back relatively clean, like, cloth and fabric as you've heated up and are sterilizing your tools. Kaylee runs in with the first buckets and says, It's all right. I'll bring more. And goes and keeps <laughs> running. Diana, has he been able to eat or drink? Uh... I've been giving him fluids for the last few days, but he hasn't been eating much. By mouth, though. By mouth? Um, yeah, he's been... He hasn't eaten anything today. Oh, well. I haven't tried this on any time. Hopefully it works. And I give him a one of my healer's brews mm -hmm. um, to hopefully neutralize like any staph infections he might have. Okay. You can certainly do that. So you throw in the healer's brew. And, and then I, this will give you some I extra use, leeway. And then I use heal four on him. Heal four on him. Boom. As you give that burst, you begin to put more stamina and juice into the body, making him even more hardy. Even yeah, more he, got, he does get an extra 10 stamina from the healers, by the way. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, um, and then I will down a crone's tonic and get to work. Okay. Downing a crone's tonic, getting to work, then. Are you ready to begin? As I'll ever be. All right. Then, as you focus up, you commit yourself fully and completely to this task. And you go, putting everything behind it, Dalton, when you are mm -hmm. using your medical knowledge, you know there's only one thing that it can be. 
Yeah, okay. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Then, first things first. You're gonna have to open them up. That's not gonna be easy. None of this is easy. Necrosis near the heart? One of the most difficult surgeries to perform. I mean, 98% of the time, fatal. You have to actually do some exploration to see how bad it is, but here you go. We'll be entering the surgery now. Even one wrong answer might be the death of Randall Roquefort. Here we go. First question. The Epic of Gilgamesh and the Code of Hammurabi are perhaps the most famous works written in what ancient language that is generally regarded as the oldest written language in history? Sanskrit. Technically Sumerian. I'll give you half on that. Hey, it's written in... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, never mind. Mm -hmm. I'll take the half. Okay. But as you begin to work, it's worse than you thought in a lot of ways. The layers of skin as you peel it back are definitely dehydrated, lacking lots of nutrients. But you have to continue pushing forward. And you're thankful that your heal and your tonic is doing its work. Second question. Where did the Industrial Revolution begin? Um... I... I want to say it be... Shit. Britain? Correct. As you keep moving, fresh water, it's brought to you. Bandages brought to you. As you keep on moving, a steady surgeon's hand. Third question. Which ancient Greek mathematician and scientist is credited with a lot of discoveries and inventions, including a screw and an engineering principle that is key in hydraulics, as well as a death ray. Archimedes? Correct. As you keep moving now, you're continuing your exploration as now you've fully kind of opened up the chest cavity and are looking inside. Fourth question. Who discovered penicillin? That, uh, Alexander Fleming. You are correct, Dalton. As you're looking around and you start to clear up some of the bacteria inside, and you're still looking in, and some of this infection seems very different, very new, not like usual. Fifth question. According to a legend spread by the historian Dia, the Roman Emperor Caligula planned to appoint his beloved Incitatus to the position of consul. What was unusual about Incitatus, whose potential appointment confirmed Caligula's insanity? He was a horse. He was indeed a horse. As we begin to look at this, your hands begin to shake a little bit. Within this chest cavity, it seems like the necrosis has mixed with the Lord's virus in a way. It is both mutating and decaying. It's like a whole different like offshoot of an arcanophage. You're going to have to pull some shit that you've never pulled before. 
Okay. And as you are looking at this up and down, you're like, okay, I know what partially makes up the Lord's virus. I know, I know how it works. I know I have to be precise. I have to block certain ways for it to communicate with itself so it doesn't pull energy from the flesh. These are all a million different adjustments that you have to make. And as you look at Randall Roquefort on the operating table, you don't have a lot of time to figure this out. Every second matters. But now you have to press on. And at this point, Dalton, we're shifting the trivia. I'm no longer asking you about just regular history. I'm asking you about Star Wars trivia now, too. Oh my god, okay. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. First question, then, as you are attempting to remove the necrosis. What is the name of Anakin's stepbrother? Owen. Correct. Uncle Owen. As you are moving, you are vaguely aware of Diana next to you, Kayla continuing to bring water, but your vision becomes a pinprick as you look and are moving. Next question. What is the name of the female member of the Jedi High Council who is the same species as Yoda? Yaddle. Correct. As you begin to continue to work, I must now ask you, and this will affect the difficulty of questions going forward. How are you attempting to remove the Lord's virus and stop its communication, its evolution, and its drawing away of Randall's life force. Oh my god. Um. Um, God. um, is Kayla in here? Kayla is in here. Uh, I tell him to go gather some of the mithril, and I ask Diana to please let Polydectes in here. Polydectes, um, that's the man? Yeah. All right. And she, like, begins to take a few steps and looks and will kind of sigh. I trust you. And she's going to go and bolt out to get Polydectes and will bring him back. And Kayle will come back with a few what appears to be, like, mithril daggers. Uh, I haven't been able to find much, but we got these. All right, that's fine. Polydectes, help me out here. All right. What are we looking at? He's got some Lord's virus in him. We need to block the signal. Okay. I'll do what I can. And you can see he starts to, like, pull out his gadgets and gizmos, as well as, like, take bits of the mithril. And he's going to basically begin to, like, street artifice right next to you as he's trying to basically create a system to block the virus. But you're using mithril. You're blocking the virus. It's all pretty good. And now, one final thing before the trivia continues. Make a mental check. A medicine mental check. As now it is trying to bring all your medical knowledge to bear. Because not only do you have to take into account the Lord's virus... You are perilously close to this man's exposed beating heart. I can use the Crohn's tonic I used? You can. Okay. 
You absolutely can. Six. Six? Okay. Are you wishing to spend any hero points? I've got two and I'll use both. Okay. Oh. Uh, eight. Eight. That's very good. That's very, very good. Then your mind is sharp, Alon. The people by your side are with you and giving you every tool at your disposal. Now it's just time to execute. Third question. After, with this one, three more correct answers to go, and you're in the clear. The question that comes next is, which Sith Lord fed on the Force and was said to have consumed planets on several occasions? Darth Nihilus. You're correct. Who said, this is how liberty dies, to thunderous applause? Uh, I want to say that was Padme? Final answer? Yes. It is Padme. Okay. Then, as you're going, you kind of take a beat, take a moment. So you have just a few kind of final cuts and incisions to make, Alon. At this point, as you go back in once again, time basically having run out. Final question. How many lightsaber forms are there? Main ones? Sure. Okay, seven. And if you want to go for the extra credit, how many other from the non main? Um, I can think of three. Mm hmm. So 10 total? Yeah. Yeah. That would be correct. As you finish up, pull back, as with that, I don't even need to make a roll. You close up Randall. And as you stand back, this has been a multi multi-hour surgery at this point, Alon. Your guess is that it's probably getting close to midnight now. So you take a few steps back. But there's a 99% chance that this man will live because of what you've done here today. I think Alon's legs give out from under him and he's just sitting on, like, lying on the floor. I think that probably Kayla would catch you. Not let you fall. Hey, 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 hang in there, hang in there. You're oh. good. You're good. Legs are wobbly. And I think Diana would also rush over. Are you alright? Yeah, it's just... Thanks a lot, Ed. Is there a chair? And I look for a chair. It, Diana's gonna pull over a chair and kind of basically throw you onto it, just picking you up and putting you down? Uh, yeah, because I imagine at this point, Ilan is, like, drenched in sweat, and at a certain point, uh, asked Kayla to just make sure none of it dripped into the man. Yeah. Okay, yeah, he, I think he's good. Uh, so yeah, Ilan's now just, like, neck craned back over like the back of the chair and just sort of breathing heavily are you all right do you need anything uh, i could actually use some of the water and diane is just gonna like bring you an entire bucket uh start drinking from the bucket mm -hmm. good water very 
pure, very clean. Good. As far as I can tell, he'll recover. Really? Yeah. You can see Diana's eyes are beginning to water as she looks at you. Thanks for coming back. Uh, do you still need to be sterile? No. And she's gonna hug you. Uh, I think for like the first like half second, Alan's a little stunned, but then as soon as he snaps out of it, he hugs her back. <laughs> and you just hear her whisper, "Thank you." Anything. And I think Kale and Polydectes are going to share a smile and, without a word, just filter out of the room, letting you have this moment. But as they're leaving, Diana looks at you, kind of pulling back a bit. Are you... Are you staying? Here? Diana, we... We think we might have a way to fix the, <coughs> the virus. Actually fix it? Yeah, actually. How? Well, a lot's involved, but we need to go to that city to the north. Glain? Yeah. That's where Mr. Van Rome and the Sentinel are. Oh. Are they living there? Or are they searching for something up there? I don't know. They left to go up there a few years ago. I, they told me that the air was poisonous up there and that they had some things to help them breathe, but I, I didn't know how to make it myself. Well, I'm sure we can figure something out. I can go with you? Yeah. Well, if we can serve. If he can move or be moved, it's going to be a bit touch and go until we figure that out. But yeah. Right. Right. And I think you would just see a very shocked face face that has been worn by years just kind of perk up into a smile and you would just faintly see Alon a glimpse of the young girl who used to be let's uh let's shut my dress and work huh? mm. sort of flip myself out of the chair and go to Reinspect everything, make sure that in the sort of massive stress and time crunch, absolutely nothing was left to chance. Mm -hmm. And Diana would kind of help you up through this and would be at your side as well, just lending a helping hand. But from what you can see, somehow 
in the heat of battle when everything was on the line, or even one missed stitch or one faulty cut could have been the difference. You can't find fault. Diana would then kind of look at you. Naze is with you. Yeah, she is. Why? I cannot and will not lie to you. I ask myself that question every day. He has... Well, I will say this. Nothing else. She did help us discover... Well, her brother helped us discover the answers to this. I... I try not to let it show, but every time I look at her, my stomach turns. And Diana would nod. thought of so long He's been... what I'd say to her when she arrived. I just... Ugh. And the moment came, nothing could escape? No. Not really. She has. She helped Bear told, through everything, and Mom, and so much else. I know. I have to always remind myself that she was manipulated into doing that. It's hard some days, but. truly is the, the whole of it. She was manipulated, taken advantage of. Right. I get that. And to her credit, she has been working just as hard to undo everything. She went through... Roughly how long was her surgery? Uh, like probably close to a 20 hour surgery. She was under a scalpel for 20 hours to remove everything that the cult put in her. And I think you would see that this kind of takes Diana by surprise for a bit, like, just a kind of startled look crosses her face, and she seems to try and wrestle and grapple with this fact. If I have ever seen any form of regret, it has appeared in her doesn't mean I'm not still furious, but I can't deny the truth. Do you trust her? I do. Make a spirit but check at benefit too. I, really quickly, I do want to sort of finish that off though. Mm -hmm. 
I do. But that is a place I came to after a lot of a lot of thought and a lot of action on her part. Takes a lot to earn that. So spirit check, you said? Yeah. As Diana will kind of nod along as you're saying this. Success. Okay. Then, as you muster all the charisma that you have, you can see Diana will close her eyes and sigh. All right. I can't, like you said, forgive her right away. I don't know if I ever can. Then don't. That is your choice to make. But I'm not going to let her sleep outside tonight, I guess. Mom wouldn't want that. Yeah. Let's call him in. She'll nod. Can I, can I stay here? I, I want to have some words alone with them. Of course. And will you go out and find the party, Alon? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you can take four hero points for your actions. Okay. So you go out and you can see. I'm guessing everyone waiting outside. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then all of you see a very tired Alon Skiratai make his way outside of the gates and see all of you. How are you doing? Tired. Everyone, come on, shuffle in. Okay. And I... I will stop Naza on her way in. Yes? Oh, hopefully being at the back of the line so everyone else is already going inside. Yeah. Hey. Uh, Diana's opinion of you isn't good. I want you to know that before you go inside. Understandable, I suppose. Just... I think I convinced her to at least give you a chance, but just try... Maybe just... Trying to keep the low, low key for a little first. Um, best behavior, which I always expect. In this case, I think also just sort of maybe. Of course, if she talks to you, then I, uh, you know, but maybe just keep it a little low key for a little while. Will do. All right, uh, let's see if we can't find y'all some rooms. Uh, Kayleigh? Yeah. We'll uh, go to the old barracks, I guess. Follow the man. And oh, Kayleigh will take you to the room that you guys were put in now all those years ago right after the Meraviglia. A blast from the past as you return to this space. Much has changed. But yet here you are all the same. Boy, 
guys are back in town. Out of curiosity, are we passing people as we go, or does this place seem mostly empty? It seems empty. Hmm. Like the only uh. people here were still Diana and Randall. But is there anything else you guys are wishing to do before heading to bed? Um, um I mean, yeah, I don't think for me either. I think Alon's too exhausted to do anything else. Fair. Normal, low profile, not doing anything, just being normal and going to sleep. <laughs> okay. Udik is also gonna just go to bed. Gotcha. After whipping out the wangs, she's tired. Fair enough. I suppose I would like to have one quick conversation, if that's okay. Okay. Um, assuming Polydectes is in the room. Polydectes is in the room, yeah. Awesome. Actually, I lied two quick conversations, because originally I wanted to talk to Kaylee. Then I thought of a second one and wanted to do that first before I forgot. Mm -hmm. So two quick conversations. One with Paul Dectis, one with Kaylee. Okay. I'll probably go with Kaylee first. Cool. So a conversation with Kaylee. <laughs> conversation with Kaylee. Uh, as she'll sort of seek him out and then sit next to him. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to be here again? I thought there would be more people. Is there anything that you know of that they left or said about where they went? They, uh, think they took all the banners, all the flags. I don't know where they went. Probably Widowstone. I guess they... They thought that they couldn't save this place. Don't know. Yeah, yeah. I just, uh... I thought I would see some old friends. Family. Guess not. Did you want to talk about it more? Did you want to be more left alone to think? Because if you wanted to talk about who you were expecting to meet, I'd listen. My squad mates, my commander. I loved Makai like he was a dad. I, uh... Again, just sister. So many people. Honestly, I thought that heading out with you all would just be another long expedition. I guess it was just longer than I expected. I just thought I'd see him again. If they did just move, surely they're still around here. Said to uh, Wid Widowstone? Is that nearby? Only the commander of the Mithril Hand truly knows where it is. It's supposed to be our last bastion, our stronghold. Either they're there or... Hmm. They were wiped out along the way. They never would have let the colors be, can 
captured by Borellian and all the others. If it's a, a last stronghold, surely it can't be too far. They're still around. Being able to ward off this threat. It's not close to here. At least it's not close to lords. Sorry. It's all right. Guess, uh, you should learn this lesson sometime or the other. She will sort of lean into, like, bump shoulders, like you've seen Caleb and I do. Mm -hmm. Just a bunk. And he'll do the same. If ever wanted to talk more, I'll... I mean, I'll be right over there. <laughs> but for now... Getting late. Yeah. I gotta Which get to bed. Had a, yeah, very long day. <laughs> She will head out. And I think before you're about to leave, he suddenly stops and kind of grabs your hand. <coughs> uh, you trust me, right? I do. Why? I don't know. I just... I have a feeling you'll need to trust me soon. And Kaylee's just going to lie back down on his cot just stare up at the ceiling. I have a question for you, Colin. Mm -hmm. uh, that I'm going to DM by typing super quickly. Okay. Turns out it's like a one-word message. Ignore all the typos. <laughs> I was typing quickly. There we go. Fixed it. Okay, understood. I will continue on. Okay. Then you also wanting to, at this point, like, go over and, like, rouse Polydectes? Oh, if he's asleep, then don't worry about it. Okay. I'm not going to wake him. It's not that important. Gotcha. I'm just going to head to sleep. Okay, then all of you can take a complete rest. As I'm guessing with the exhaustion that would follow, all of you would probably crash pretty hard and would wake up no earlier than like 9 a.m. Yeah. But the day is now yours. As you all wake up, what are you doing? Does this place have a kitchen? Uh, yes, and Kaylee's already making breakfast. Is it a stocked kitchen? Not stocked, no. Okay. Just curious. That's all. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make another crone stonic. Okay. And then I'm going to go and check on Randall. Gotcha. Then, as you head in and go and open the door, um, you see an unconscious Diana sleeping kind of on a bedroll over nearby. And at this point as well, you can see a half-conscious Randall Rocafort. You can see his eyes will just kind of momentarily meet yours as he, like, 
tries to prop himself up a little bit and then just gives up and just lies yeah, I, down. Yeah, if he tries, I stop him. Mm -hmm. Let's not jump to that quite yet. Huh? Uh, you've aged well. Uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> it's a joke. Because you haven't. Yeah, I get it. Thank you. This is not there. I was saying he was calling you ugly and old. He he legitimately wasn't because. And because Alon hasn't aged. Was... I... Okay. Um. Uh. Uh, how is your breathing? Are you able to get a full inhale? I am. It's a little sore, but yes, I can get a full inhale. Good. All right. And I will sort of check the dressings. Yeah, and they're, they've held. Maybe one or two have come a little loose, but you fix them up. All right. You were in quite the rough spot. Right. <laughs> My own fault really got reckless. What do you mean? I thought I could get through to my daughter. Well, turns out that didn't really work. I'd be dead if it weren't for Diana. Well. For the time being, that is not your daughter. But, uh... She'll always be my daughter. No matter what. I know. Yeah, I know. We think we have a way to get her back to her old self again. I heard Diana whispering something like that to me. Is it true? Yeah, it is. It's gonna take a lot of work. There's a lot of risks involved, but yeah, we have a way. Thank Estelle. <laughs> uh. It's the best news I've heard um. in ten years. Uh, I will give a quick listen to his heartbeat to see if it is weak. And you kind of hear that uh, it is not as strong as a regular heartbeat, but you don't think it's anywhere close to something ab abnormal. It's probably just normal recovering process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... Let's see here. Uh, how I, over the night we sort of discovered the uh, lack of others in this keep. Right. Uh, where have y'all been getting food from, or have the stocks held this long? Well, a few years back, I decided that we needed to begin hunting and <coughs> have the stocks last for as long as they could. These days, Diana takes care of most of the hunting. I help where I can. All right. Well, uh, I would prescribe some dietary restrictions, but honestly, I doubt most of those will apply here. 
Yeah. Just from lack of options. Mm. Unless you want root vegetables and heavily charred wild rabbit. Yeah. Well, oh, actually, that's... Those are probably quite good for you in your current state, so long as you don't eat the organs. I won't. Apart from that, we don't eat much else. We found uh, a beehive a few years back and got some honey from it, and we're trying to make it last through the birthdays. <laughs> I was worried. I thought that... Uh, this year it would be the first one that we didn't have a sweet treat. Well. Seems like y'all won't be staying here to celebrate it much anyway. That's good. That's good. I'll, uh, I'll talk to Polydectes. Maybe we can figure out some sort of transport for you. Hmm. I want to still give you a bit more time to sort of just sit and heal, but make the travel easier. Where are we traveling? North. Ghislaine is north. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a tough sell. There's a uh, noxious cloud that surrounds the city. We had a few of our number knew them. Florian and Scarlet Sentinel. They went up there to check out a potential lead and to find out what Borellian's cultists were doing up there. Didn't come Did back. Did you, uh... They had protective equipment? Uh, from what I know, yes. Didn't uh, happen to leave any behind, did they? No, it took everything they had to scrounge up enough parts. At least for the two of them. Right. We'll figure something out. But, uh, the ingredients we need to fix this, that's where they are. I see. Then we'll have to do everything in our power to <coughs> get up there, find them. Yep. And, uh, we're not just going to leave you sitting here while we go off and do that. Of course. Besides, besides, what sort of doctor would I be if I left my patient unattended? Something tells me you have a lot of patients to attend to. Yeah, if you were. Regulars. I'll say this, though. <sighs> There's one patient that um, probably needs a lot of work, a lot of attention. Yeah. She loves you. I hope you know that. Thank God, yeah. That is good to hear, but uh, still. Um, I hope you don't mind, but I took the liberty to. I always, um, I always hoped that you would come back, and I knew that. After that strange man and his friend came along and said that you would be a while longer, 
I started keeping a journal, a record. Not of me, but oh. Diana. Big life events. Does she know about it? Um, I think she must by now, but how in depth it is, I, I don't think so. She's never looked at it. I never talked about it. It was just supposed to be something that I had so I could have known Agnes more. Diana was just a kid when she knew her, but from the stories she's told and from what Florian and the Sentinel said, I wish I could have truly met her. Not missed a thing. So, uh, I know it's not the same. <clears throat> and he's going to reach into his pocket and pull out a small iron key. Kind of extend it to you. Uh, this unlocks Take it. a drawer in my room, my nightstand. You'll find the journal in there. Towards the end, I have a, a list, her likes, dislikes. I'm not a fan of... <laughs> Brussels sprouts. And, um, just things that I thought a father might want to know. I would hug you so hard right now if I didn't know it would rip the stitches. You don't need to do that. I just. I tried to do what I would have done for Agnes if if I hadn't failed her. I'm I'm as terrible when it's moving correctly. When it changes, that exponentially worse. Yes. Uh, I, uh, I did keep a notebook in those days. I'm sure I have some notes on her if you want me to assemble them. Would you? Would you really? Yeah. Yeah. Please. I would like that. More than anything. Of course. I'll have it by the end of the day. Don't worry about me today. Um, read the journal and you know, catch up. Make up for lost time. <laughs> um, I'll sort of give him some water and make sure he has more next to him um, you think you can keep food down yet? Uh, it's uh, a struggle but I'll push through I'll get you some. Uh, how long she been passed out? Mm. She probably fell asleep sometime early in the morning. She's a bit of a night owl. <laughs> All right. She'll need a rest then. I'll be back with some food for you. Thank you. Um, does Diana have a blanket? She does not right now, no. She seems to have just kind of like fallen asleep at a table. Um, were the like old uniforms brought when I asked for them? 
They were, yeah. Uh, is there like a coat or something? There is, yeah. Okay, I'll sort of drape that over her. Okay. Then head off to grab him some food. Gotcha. Then you head off to grab food and everyone begins eating. Is there anything else you guys want to do in this kind of interim period while Randall and Diana are otherwise incapacitated? Utica will be making one small possum. She'll be like making like a little crochet possum. Okay. Very nice. And anything else from the group? Now that he's awake. Mm -hmm. I will approach Polydectes probably as we're cleaning up breakfast. Okay. I didn't exactly uh, mention this the other night, but because um, I was kind of, you know, distracted, but I wanted to say when you thanked me for coming back, I wanted to say thank you for getting us out of our contracts. It, well, I didn't really do any of that. You helped us figure out how. Mm. And get all the materials. And even after knowing everything we did and what the world was like out there, still helped a group of near strangers. So, thank you. Don't mention it. Hopefully anyone else would have done the same. And she will not. You know, I was kind of hoping when they had a kitchen here that, you know, I could bake something for y'all. Kaylee hasn't had any, v Vicha hasn't either. I think it's only Elan, Boudica, and Diana too, that that was years ago, that have tried any of my baking. Hmm. When we get back, I promise, though, I will make something for all of us. I'll hold you to that promise. And then that's all the conversation I had planned. Okay. <laughs> Nasa just, like, robot, like, turns, walks away. <laughs> I, I imagine she nods and then continues to help clean up. Okay. Pop. Oh, wait. Well, any special requests for if I do? I remembered how to have a conversation. <laughs> I'm tired, okay? I've been in the car for about 17 hours the past 24 of them. 48. Yeah. Uh, he kind of <laughs> thinks for a moment and says, um, probably, I don't know. I always liked muffins. Oh my god, I have the perfect muffin recipe. Oh. <laughs> that's I think that's one of the last things I made. Really? Yeah. It, I made a muffins often. Um, I kind of got it down pat now. But, um, gosh, I cannot wait to do it again. Okay, it's going to be muffins. Okay. Can't wait. Please debate. Hopefully this time without the whatever wildflowers Brillian was putting in them. Probably Estelle flowers. Probably Estelle that flowers. I, I really hope that's not the only thing that made them taste good. I've been do I've been studying it for years, all the chemistry and everything behind it to make it perfect. I really hope it wasn't just the stupid Estelle flowers that made it taste good. I don't think so. I mean, if you put all that effort into it, they'll probably still taste pretty good. I hope so. It would be kind of funny, though. <laughs> it might. Although, I'll be honest, I probably won't be a great judge. I'll just be happy to eat a muffin again. I know, God, and I'll be happy to bake them, too. 
Probably when we get back to Darmium, if they've still got supplies enough. Right. Oh, that will be the day. You hope they're doing okay. I think they'll be fine. Yeah. Probably also needs to have their heads on a swivel. Yeah. I hear that we're... If we're going to continue up to Glane, though, we only have enough breathing masks for the... number of us, right? We... Probably... If we're considering bringing the other two along, we need more. Bringing Randall in his condition is probably not a good idea. I don't think so either, but... I'm also not at least much Diana. of a fighter, so... I could swap places with Diana. Maybe if I'm here, I can take a look at the mithril and fix this place up a bit. At the very least, I can make sure Randall doesn't keel over and die. That would probably work, too. I'll have to see if Alon bites on it. I'm sure... I'm sure he can be convinced. I'm glad he's back with Diana again. It's good to see. <laughs> Robot walk. <laughs> I don't have it. Not literally in Garrett, which is like <laughs> nodding. Probably offering to, you know start gathering like she's probably wow that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> nodding hey can i take your plate taking it taking people's plates and walk into the sink <laughs> just no, that was yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's great to see yeah it is here can i take that for you yoink <laughs> <laughs> it's still like half full of food. He's like, huh? Oh, is it? I no. thought we said we were cleaning up. I thought we said we were cleaning up. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, Some then if we're eating, eat she will just... Okay, then if we're still eating, she'll just take a large bite of food and continue eating. <laughs> no, he's finished. He doesn't eat as okay. slowly as I do. I also eat very slowly, as you know. Anyway... <laughs> But yeah, as you do that, take the food away. Is there anything else that people are doing? Um, I am going to find the notebook. Gotcha. Then, as you go and look around, you're able to find um, Randall's room. As you open it up, you see it seems relatively normal, kind of dirtier, dustier in a lot of ways, with the accretion of years. You can see many old weapons, broken sets of armor, maps, and things like that. And an entire wall filled up of drawings that it looks like Diana made for him as well. And as you go through and you walk past the place where you know this man has lived for almost 10 years go to kind of his bedside table use the key open it up and inside you can see a thick thick like brown leather bound like tome it's not really a journal it's probably a good inch and a half to two inches thick Um, I think immediately I feel bad that the stuff that I have about Agnes will not be nearly this much, but, um, I will just sort of start reading. Gotcha. Then, as you kind of flip it open to the first page, there is a little note in the front that says, Dear Alon, I hope one day you will read this. 
I live, I leave within this journal my experiences with your daughter. Forgive me. I abandoned my own, and I am not good at this. But I'm trying to do the best I can. Inside you'll find the record, as best I could keep it. Thank you. And then it just continues along a full and complete record, day by day, with very, very few missed days, about everything that happened. Just with Diana, sometimes it mentions him if it's absolutely necessary. But the intent of this journal, Alon, is that you never missed a day. That another man, another father, made sure that he could give this gift to you. And at the end, true to his word, there are probably a good... 40 pages that are scribbled out and you can see things like uh -huh. love of unicorns crossed out um <laughs> love of dragons crossed out love of unicorns written again crossed out extra hard this time as it's like it documents her likes and dislikes uh. and <laughs> do you want to know something crazy along hmm there is one thing under loves that has never been crossed out. Her family. It was one of the first things written amongst a sea of black scribbles. It remains seemingly unchanged. I think Elon has been just fully weeping since he started reading. <laughs> um, and at this, uh, he just shuts the book and it becomes full on ugly cry. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Um, and after a while, he will collect himself. Um, take out his own journal and sort of reading through it again from the beginning, more or less, or at least since he came to Lords, uh, will record every event with Agnes in it um, and tear uh, some pages out of the back so that he can present it to Randall. Okay. Uh, very specifically, uh, the last page ends with to be continued beautiful uh, I will yeah. put the journal that he kept in my bag and I will bring the pages to him gotcha then as you go and you bring the pages his way you find waiting outside of his room Diana kind of sees you approaching. He's he's asleep now. Okay. Um He seems to be doing well. I I, I checked the the stitches and everything. His heartbeat seems good. He's a strong guy. Mm -hmm. He'll do well. I hope so. I, I'm sorry, I don't... I don't know what to do next. Uh, a bit uh, 
at a loss myself, but uh, I do know what all of us are going to be doing next. Setting this right. Diana will nod. I want to do that. I want to set everything right. I saw Mom one time. You did? And she'll nod. And you can see a hand kind of goes up to the scar across one of her eyes. I tried to help her dad. Of course she did. I couldn't get through to her. I'm sorry I couldn't get through to her. Don't. Don't do that. What happened? What is happening to her is so total that I cannot and you should not even consider that a failing of any kind. We have a way. Uh, Alana is going to sort of step closer and move to put his hands on her shoulders. You can see she won't stop you. We'll just look up into your eyes. What has happened? I wish I could just turn back and make never happen, but I can't do that. What we can do, you and me and the others, is we can make tomorrow better. I'd like that. I'd like that a lot. Good. Let's make it happen, huh? You have to promise me something, though. What? Name it. Chill move one of her hands and kind of grip your own tightly. I get to help you. I've been here doing this for a long time. I've seen a lot of things. I want to help. I know I can. And you will. By your side? Every step. Promise. Promise. I love you, Dad. A uh, deep hug. I love you, too. I think father and daughter just share a long, heartfelt, deep embrace.
Holodecti said that he'd be willing to stay behind and look after Randall. Oh. Well, it means we won't have to make another mask, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Uh... Say, so, uh... How many of the keeps the fences are still up and running? I've tried to keep as many going as I can. We have, um, two operational ballista. Um, some of the traps are a little wonky by the gates, but... I mean, if they really attacked, there's nothing much that I could do, but it's better than just an well, empty hole. Well, the way I see it is that we have a master artificer and two people that know this keep backwards and forwards. Let's say we up armor it and give Polydectes a crash course. Yeah, yeah. I can do that. All right. Let's go teach him something. Gotcha. Then Diana and you will probably go wrangle up Kale and Polydectes and kind of start doing tours of Cartham Gores and Polydectes will be taking notes and seeing what places he might be able to improve. Yeah. And... The mithril reserves of Cartham Gores are not anywhere close to what they were, but there is enough mithril here that, you know, with some work, Polydectes could probably begin assembling everything you'd need to bring back to Darmium to complete this potential cure. Get everything working. All right. But as this is going on, is anybody else doing something? I think Boudica's continuing to make this little possum. She's putting in a lot of detail and like effort into it. She's like kind of muttering out loud. Does she still like? Does she still like animals? Ah, oh, maybe I should have asked her before I start making something. Gotcha. What do you think? You complete the possum? Yeah. All right. And it for sure has little pink, like, stitches in the cheeks to, like, have blush. Gotcha. Then, as Diana is passing, will you go up to her? Yes. As you approach, she just kind of does a double take. And it gives a little bit of a shy smile. You haven't aged much. Ha, huh, yeah, well. I'll, uh, I'll have to share my, my secret, my secrets with you at some point. Right. Hmm. Anyways, uh, I know this doesn't make up for lost time, and I hope you still like animals, but here you go. I'll go ahead and... You can Present. see Diana will immediately take it. I still have the originals. Oh, you do? Well, I brought two of them with me once. Well, when the Meraviglia was going on. The rest are technically back in Lords, but... Those original ones got me through a lot of long nights. Um, I'm glad that they, they helped you. I can make you as many more as you'd like. I, I can make you more animals, too. I'll take anything I can get. Okay. Well, if you'll take anything you'll get... Hmm. What what is another animal you would like? Um, giraffe, mongoose, um, monitor lizard, badger. What if I made you a giraffe that also had a really tall hat on? I'd love that. I really like that a lot. Mm-hmm. 
Alright, I'll make a giraffe with a really tall hat. Thank you, Beautica. Of course, anytime. It's strange how all of you are back and... You're the same, but different. We were... We were gone for so, so long, and... Yeah, same but... Same but different, I guess is the best way to describe it. Hmm. I should probably uh, go find Polydectes. I need to show him where the armory once was. Oh, of course, gotcha. If there's anything I can do to help, please just let me know. I mean, well, one of the columns near the southern gate collapsed about a year ago. I, I don't know if it would be possible for you to just kind of pick it back up. Boudicca's zooming off. She's okay. zooming off right to where that is. <laughs> there. Then you zoom <laughs> off. Meow. <laughs> Deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> But as this is occurring, anything else people are doing? If not, I mean, Diana is of the mindset that she wants to get going and start getting this cure as soon as possible. Because the quicker the cure has gotten, uh, the quicker that all this can start getting fixed. So the question is, for all of you, how long do you want to stay here before heading out? Uh, Elon's of the mind of as long as it takes to get Polydectes ready, and then as soon as it's like, as soon as we've prepared him as much as we can. Gotcha. Add out. I mean, if you take the rest of the twelfth of Nuity to like dedicate to getting Polydectes ready with like how Cartham Gores is set up and what are some things that he needs to be doing, as well as how to take care of Randall Rocafort during his recovery process. Mm -hmm. I mean tomorrow morning, probably a great time to leave. Yeah, alright. Next morning. Mm hmm I agree with that. Would agree and I did. I did um, get Randall the pages. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Okay. And he would have thanked you profusely, and would be reading him, reading them, um, pretty much the entire time. Just going over page after page, soaking in every word. Right. And. Uh... Yeah, leave next morning. Gotcha. Then we'll stop at the, the night of the 12th and ask, is there anything people are doing after dinner before going to bed or something like that? Other than being normal? <laughs> being so incredibly normal. Uh, I think if there's a moment where she's free, um, Vicha would approach Diana. Yeah. Yeah. And Diana would uh, probably just be walking the walls of Cartham Gores. She'd stop and see Vicha approach and say, um, It's Vicha, right? I don't think we've met. Yeah, I don't think we've met yet. Um, but you're Diana, I assume. I am. Yeah. Alon's daughter. Uh, yeah, he's talked quite a bit about you. Has he? Yeah. Yeah, missed you a lot. What has he said? There was a lot of... A lot of regret. But he talked very fondly about you. How smart you were. Um, he he liked seeing you get along with that young girl, uh, Chloe. I think her name was. 
Yeah. She was my best friend. Um, how did you... I, I, I guess you met my dad, um, after he was captured? Yes, um... <laughs> yeah, uh, funny story, um... Your dad and his friends, um, rescued me from a dimension I had tumbled into by mistake. Mm. Uh, without them, I would probably still be there. Well, that's good. That you're not there, I suppose. Yes. Uh, interesting place to observe, but not one I wanted to stay in. Well, thank you for helping us. I know that this probably isn't your fight, but... Not really, um, but I'm here, and they seemed like they needed all the help they could get, so I was more than happy to assist. I mean, any assistance is good assistance, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's great to have you along with us now, too. Uh, I just figured maybe I should formally introduce myself before we get on the road tomorrow right well um i'll watch your back if you watch mine sounds like a deal and diana will spit into her hand and extend it <laughs> and i think he just kind of momentarily taken aback but he'll spit into his own hand and shake it gotcha And she'll nod and smile. Ooh. Well, I suppose it's going to be a long day tomorrow. Best get the hay. Right. I think they're trying to get up uh, bright and early tomorrow. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have to get used to that. I'm used to staying up at night and covering that shift. Uh, I understand that. Uh, I used to pull a lot of long nights myself. <laughs> How'd you switch to being a morning person? I started having a very strong reaction to the sun. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I it's a long story. I... Perhaps I'll delve into it another time. Okay. Well, uh, I suppose... Good night, Vicha. See you tomorrow. <laughs> night, Diana. See you tomorrow. And any other last-minute things before all of you take a complete rest? If not, then all of you can indeed take that complete rest as uh, the morning time begins to come around. And I'm assuming, Alon, you're doing one last check on Randall and making sure he's in good shape. Uh-huh. And um, Boudica, would you help Diana load up her kind of like pole wagon with yeah. supplies? Yeah. Uh, you yeah. can load it up a lot more because I'm assuming you're just gonna be pulling it along like it's nothing. Yeah. Fair enough. You start loading those things in. Polydectes is probably gonna come along and uh, approach you, Alon. All right, I got a checklist pulled together. Based on some old maps and things, it's probably gonna be about a two week round trip for all of you to get to Glane and probably to head back. That's if no time fuckery shenanigans goes on. Yeah. Good luck, and I promise I'll take care of Randall and this place will be in tip-top shape when you get back. 
Feel confident? I feel confident. That's all I need. Good luck. You too. I think Polydectes would also kind of approach Neza. Um, probably going to be a bit of a journey. Um, make sure that ring of yours is in tip-top shape. Uh, don't let any dirt get into it while you're gone. That could mess up some of the functions in it. I'll be real careful with it. Um, if you can find some unalloyed gold while you're out as well, the purer the better it, um, I might be able to use it for something to, um, some inventions of gold. It's a good conductor of electricity and magic and other things. Okay, I'll keep an eye out. Okay. Say, so, when we do get back, I was wondering if you'd be... Well, I meant to ask this to Benno, but we had to leave so quickly. If... I had been trying to look into a little bit more basic artificing. I wonder if you'd be willing to help me learn. Yes, of course. I'd, I'd love to teach you. Okay, thank you. I will look for gold. I'll... I'll draw up a lesson plan. In two weeks. In two weeks. And you can see he's going to smile. He will smile as well and offer a high five. High five. Let's go. I now have a to-do list. <laughs> it's one item long. That's a to don't fuck up list. Yes. A to not forget list. Mm-hmm. Then, as all of you are kind of gearing up, who is leading the procession out of um, the actual Cartham Gore's kind of courtyard? Who's at the front of the pack? I mean, Boudica has the cart. Do you want the cart in the front or in the back? Probably the back. Okay. That way we don't keep bumping into the wheels. You wouldn't. Okay, I'd be pulling first. it too fast. I was about to say, what if Alon and Diana <laughs> lead side by side? Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Then both Alon and Diana make your way forward, and Diana goes, opens the gate, and there's a wall of darkness. Or the door should be along. In this area has all of a sudden gotten a lot darker. The Dark Souls boss. Colin, does it look like there's no exit? As you start looking around, <coughs> it looks like all the doors are gone. Like just kind of faded uh, immediate... back into the walls. We're looking at Vicha. <laughs> Immediately pull out the crossbow. Gotcha. Then, and as think... you look at Vicha, what do they see? Vicha's grinning. Uh, you know, for a moment there, I really thought Neza had caught on to me. She certainly made things a little more difficult, being so stingy with her Torvian. But just like your efforts now, it was too little, too late. It was simply an echo of how far you've of how you've gotten this far. Have you guys ever really thought about that? How you've only survived by sheer dumb luck, along with riding off the backs of those greater than you? The people who've died so that you may continue on in your pointless spiral. The trail of corpses behind you. Quinn, Bouchard, Aoife, Dusan. They all died trying to fix your mistakes. Not to mention Sten, Magister Tahanis, that loudmouth Benno. Nothing but husks now, because once again, you were blind to the danger in front of you. Even the original Vicha, the fool who thought he was your friend, you left to rot in the arena. These were all good people, whose downfalls were only that they tried to help you, that they tried and to save a colony of ants marching determinedly off into a death spiral. And what of the corpses you still doggedly pursue? The trusting housewife, the girl who was so happy to finally have friends. I can see no point to that. 
You will not create your cure, and you will not bring lords back. You are not enough. You are worse than useless to them, but you can still hold use to me. With your last dying breath, you'll be fuel for Kainosuke. The casket lid is about to slam shut, and soon the maggots will feast. From your desiccated corpses, a new dimension will bloom, a cage that none can escape. With poor, abandoned Diana as my emissary, abandoned no longer, but caught in the sweet, suffocating embrace of something much grander than herself, Kainasking's own dimension will rise, one to rival the Warrens, one to rival yours in time. I hope you're ready, my dear friends, because there is no exit from the grave you have dug yourselves. And she watches the holes in Vicha begin to expand, and waves of darkness begin to pour out. As long ago, the true weight of what you all did comes to bear. Vicha was touched by multiple sources. They had multiple pieces. One piece belonging to a grimoire, who wants nothing but to trap. Another piece belonging to the Malefic Warrens, a dimension that wants nothing more than to eat. And you slammed those two pieces together, transforming them into something new. Something greater. Something far more evil. As the power erupting from Vicha spreads, the form breaking and cracking. As all of you see, Vicha tr begins to transform into something not human. Something not Vicha. And then Vicha vomits blood. <laughs> As you hear a voice say, I want you to know that I hate breakfast. I think it's disgusting. I don't like the meat. I don't like anything about it. You want to know what the worst part about it is for me? It's the eggs. I hate them. Give me jerky any day. Not eggs. But you know what the strange thing is? You monstrous freak. Zotus root. A poison. It tastes like eggs when you consume it. Now you can easily slip the antidote into people and it's like nothing even happened and even then triggering the poison res requires a special enzyme, a special little compound, a little bit of magic here and there. I had you pegged from the start, you fucking monster. And Kele is going to ignite his sword as Vicha's form now begins to blossom and evolve. And he is going to look towards the rest of you, specifically probably to like Alon and Boudica and Neza, probably Boudica and Neza, and say, I told you, evil face, evil person, let's run. And are you running? Yeah, Run to yeah. where? I don't know. And you watch as Kayle is going to attempt to start making his way towards like a part of like a crumbling wall that leads deeper into the fortress itself. And he's going to try and lower his shoulder to break through. It won't budge. And he's going to look to you, Boudica. Are you trying to break down the wall? Yeah, Boudica, Boudica gets the the vibe, the concept, and she's going for it. Gotcha. Then, as you temporarily extend your wings, giving you a speed boost, you smash through the wall, creating your own exit. And as all of you 
turn around. Not Vicha. You finally digested that poison the Hobgoblin has been feeding you for all these weeks, unbeknownst to you. What do you say as you see your prey trying to run, trying to escape? You can run, but there is nowhere you can go that I will not find you. Kainas King's limits. Well, they won't be limits for much longer. Not for me. And as you all hear Vicha say this, you just have to keep running, diving in deeper to Kartham Gores as the full power of these evil forces comes to bear. And it is here where we will end our session for today. And season seven of the Ascended Garden. As next time, we will pick up with Not Vicha and the race through Kartham Gores. God, I told you that was not fucking Vicha! We really know how to pick When did you up. say that? Yeah, when uh, did you say that? They, they told me that in the car yesterday. <laughs> mm. On my life, that's not Vicha. Mm-hmm. And yet you gave him everything. Yeah. You gave me so much friend. more than I needed. But all of you can take level up and Alon can take two. One oh. for completing the season, one for being a good dad. <laughs> <sighs> well, a uh, lot of stuff happened today. Yeah. I think that was a pretty normal session. <sighs> some surgeries, we made some stuffed possums. A villain monologue. We yeah. learned how to have conversations. <laughs> Step one. Did don't we? walk Did away mid conversation. <laughs> Step one. See it through. Bring it home. Finish the conversation. <laughs> the day before the session, <laughs> I was painting. This is how far I got. Ooh. Up. Ooh, nice. Thank you. Doggy. Let me head back over. Doggy. 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 I have, That's very cute. 